Um, welcome to the Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioner meeting with our assessors on December 6, 2023 at 5 p.m. here in the main meeting room in South Deerfield, Massachusetts. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcasts unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. This meeting will be held in person here in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices. In accordance with the Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, anyone intending to record the meeting must identify themselves to our clerk, Trevor McDaniel, and provide their name and address for the record. Thank you. So I'm calling the meeting to order at um, 5.02, and we will suspend public comment tonight because we have um, single agenda items. Well, we have a couple items on our agenda, but it is the fiscal 2024 tax classification hearing with our board of assessors. So welcome. Hello. Thank you for coming to our meeting. The hearing note. Yes. Um, do you want to read it, Trevor? Yep. Thank you. I've been talking too much today. My well, voice. Or, uh, can we just have them read it? Oh. Yes. yes. Hi. Oh, yes. Oh. I'm sorry. Yes. We should. Excuse me. Hi. Yeah. Chuck Shattuck, um, Chair of the Board of Assessors. And uh, Skip Sobieski, Board of Assessors. We, we we know you all so yeah. well. Yeah. We <laughs> sometimes forget that. <laughs> so thank you. Don't. I know, right. but thank you. And you're, uh, you already called your meeting to order, so you're, yes, you're, you're already yep. great. Perfect. So, um, okay, Town of Deerfield tax classification hearing. The Town of Deerfield Select, uh, the Town of Deerfield Select Board will hold a classification hearing on December 6, 2023 at 5 p.m. to, for the purpose of providing an open forum for the discussion of local property tax policy and whether all five classes of property, residential, open space, commercial, industrial, personal, shall be taxed at the same rate or at different rates. Information and data concerning the physical effect of the available alternatives is open to the public inspection in the municipal offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass, weekdays between the hours of 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. and on the town's website, www.deerfieldma.us. Um, interested taxpayers may review the material and attend the hearing. Written or oral statements from interested taxpayers will be accepted and taken into consideration at the hearing. Written statements will also be accepted prior to the hearing. Meetings being, being held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. For purposes of in-person attendance, the Town of Deerfield will host the meeting at, uh, in the meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. And the remote participation is the same as our original meeting. The toll-free number, if you'd like to dial in, is 833-548-0276. Meeting ID is 911-604-1580, and the passcode is 570012. On the um, Town of Deerfield website, you'll see a, a Zoom link where you can click on Zoom and join by Zoom and participate there as well. So welcome, everybody. I'll call the hearing to order. Hello. Great. Great. So, tell us your work. What's that? Tell us your work. Oh, you... sir, yeah, yeah yes. so um, uh, I guess uh, consistent with, uh, I'll say, at least since my involvement, and I'll say recent history anyways, we always recommend the single tax rate. Single tax rate is $13.85. Um, of course, you could choose a split rate. Um, just giving some of the numbers, you could have uh, residential at thirteen forty-two. dollars That would um, then increase the commercial uh, industrial to $15. Call it fifteen dollars and twenty-four cents. You could take that all the way down to about eleven dollars and sixty-nine cents on the residential, uh, but then that would increase uh, commercial industrial to about twenty dollars and seventy-eight cents. Um, again, just historically, we've always chosen and recommended the single tax rate. A couple of other quick notes: um, even though the tax rate has gone down, um, the average single-family home or um, average appraised values have all gone up. Gone up, I would say, for the single families. Uh, homes, the average has gone up roughly 50,000. 
Um, that's about a 5% wow. increase in average tax bills that can be expected. So again, tax, tax rate going down, however, appraised values up. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty that's amazing. A huge jump in the last it, two years. It's a significant increase, yeah. The last year, um, 22 into uh, fiscal year 23 was about a 4% increase in average tax bills for single family home. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, historically, um, I don't, of all any classes I've taken, any webinars I've taken, it is all saying that you should have a single tax rate for a you know a vital um, community, and it, and really the split tax rate is just to nail somebody on the way out. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, that is not the kind of perception that we want to promote. Right. So I'm I'm in favor of a single tax rate. I don't know if anyone else wants to discuss so, it. Um... I, I would just like to, for the audience, ask general questions so that, uh, you know, if there is anybody here or will they, if they watch it in the future, they'll be able to hear a discussion. So yes. what is the amount of commercial property in town versus residential and or all other classes of property? So what burden would be, you know, be what percentage of the tax base would we be hitting if we had a split rate? Um, good question. I don't. Um, do we have seventy six percent is residential? Yeah, there we are. Yep. Up. Seventy six and a 76 quarter. Seventy six versus twenty three point seven four. Yep. 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 So the commercial is twenty three. Yep. Yes. Yep. That's yep. correct. Yep. And that's a good mix for a town really to yes. have residential and a good amount of. I mean, we're lucky to have some good commercial property, industrial property here in town, paying, you know, paying, um, you know, considerable amount towards everybody's tax bill and, and, we and we're not supporting we're and we want schools. yes we yeah. don't want to chase anybody away right yep and For we sure. want to remain inviting yeah. um, so the levy is 13 million nine thirty five four hundred and twenty four dollars that's right and that's uh approximately what percent increase from last year um, in the levy? I think last year we were we we were like one we were under the two and two and a half percent increase if I'm correct I think one eighty one point eight six or something like that I don't know my yeah, brain has yeah, numbers that yeah okay <clears throat> yeah well that's 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 enough then I I also agree that single tax rate uh, seems to be working for your field and um, you know we gain businesses from communities that uh, don't have a single tax rate and that's probably a contributing factor um i would make a motion to approve the single tax rate of thirteen dollars and eighty five cents we just i think we got closer here for right yeah and then is there any other are we yeah questions there... any other comments any public comment anybody okay. online have any i forgot we had to close the hearing yeah no, that's okay. <laughs> no. i just want to get on to other stuff yeah, okay comments from you see your cameras on see if you need anything jack davy who's on too um jack doesn't look like he's no he's you. muted up but uh, okay just didn't know if anyone had... then i will make a motion to close the hearing okay i'll second that any further discussion no nope. hearing none all those in favor tim hilchey aye trevor mcdaniel aye carolyn s aye um i will make a motion to um have a single tax rate of thirteen dollars and eighty five cents and appreciate Second. your work for doing this. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, the only question I had, uh, just in general, is um, how much capacity do we have under the our limit? Two and a half. I mean, are we like right up there? I think we're right up there. We're usually right up there. Yeah, we usually have pennies. I'll but I just to the limit. You know, I thought we were right up to it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. We're, we're pretty close. We you did an there. excellent job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to know, uh, since we'll be talking about other things tonight related to roads. Um, okay. Thank you. So, okay. so I guess I one question just on this classification options. They're talking total residential value net of exemption. Is that uh res that's value that's not taxable that's right in town so and that's um 
airfields, eagles, and pistols. Yeah, et cetera. like yep. 76, um, 76 million dollars worth of value that is not taxable. Um, and then commercial and industrial value net of exemption is is um, one hundred seventy six million. I'm trying to figure out what what entities that would be, unless that's also you know school as well. But um, or am I got is that just right? Let's see. You're looking at the small commercial exemption mm. seventy six nine. Oh, okay, yeah, and then and then residential is seven hundred and sixty seven million. Right, so that's the, that's the tax. Um, that's net of the exemption. taxable assessed mm -hmm. value. So I think that excludes the exempted that's property. Right. I got gotcha. you. And then, um, and there we don't. I guess Deerfield, we don't have a small commercial exemption. So okay. Um, yeah, commercial exemption percentage is zero. Right. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, yeah, where is the, where is the uh, the large nonprofit uh, communities uh, represented on this chart? I mean, I know that we don't tax they them. Be, they okay. wouldn't be on this chart. Yeah, okay. My understanding is there's there's close to three hundred fifty million dollars, if not more, of, if not more now of yeah. exempted property. So more every year. More every, year. every That's right. Single right. year. That's correct. Yeah. We got to figure out something to do about that because that is really rough. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Really thank appreciate you coming. Really appreciate it. One thing I was going to ask if you folks are able to is to give us an update on um, the tip that we have with NewPro, just to you know give us an idea of where we are in the process and see how that's working. Um, what is the, you know, I know they're in the process of building. So how do you go ahead and determine, okay, it's 75% built. What is it worth? That must be a tough calculation. Uh, or does Patriot do that Patriot for you? Does Patriot does that. Oh, well, that's a yeah, good thing. It's a tough calculation. Yeah. Patriot, that. Um, is, is that something that the Karen could share with us at some point? Oh, sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 And I think it was 35% as of. Um, Oh, yeah. we can. We, we discussed it last night, but I would, yeah, you say it was yeah. I think it was thirty five percent complete. If okay, I have my numbers right, but we can we can certainly get that. yeah. I'm just happy to share. You yeah. know, because the TIF is 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 set up so that uh, they get their biggest tax breaks in the years when they aren't really worth that much. So it's actually probably a a good thing for the town. Yeah. Um, it sounds really onerous when you look at it, but in five years, I think we're we're in twenty percent range or something. Now we're at maybe a 1.3 million assessment, and that was, I think, a year right. I think it was like 35 percent of the yeah, yep. yeah, that sounds about projected right. future, you know, value. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the tip was maybe 75 percent for the first right, year, so 75 percent of 35 percent, right, right, uh, right. Yeah. And this is another question you may not have the answer for, but um. We, we've been discussing a possible purchase of some town-owned land near the new pro property. Um, if they were to acquire that land, would it be handled differently since it's real estate and it's not something that was covered by the original TIF? I wouldn't think that'd be Yeah, we'd probably have to write that in to just make, make sure that we gave you a TIF on your original project and now you're buying more property and that's going to be treated normally. So... But that's a subject to negotiate with them as well. So yeah, leave it to them. Okay, thank Great. you. Thank you, guys. I guess one other item that we don't need to discuss now, but just something to continue to think about is um, moving to quarterly versus the yes twice a year billing. Yeah. Um, so I know that that's come up before, um, but you know perhaps we can schedule a time you know at an assessors meeting just to kind of talk through pros cons any you know yeah. Terms of well, we were that, but, we yeah. we were thinking of the estimated tax bill. Yes. Um, because um, so many people now um, have the mortgage payments. So to go from um, twice yearly to the quarterly, mm -hmm. is, it, it, people have to fix their mortgages and notify the banks and whatever. But if we went to the estimated tax rate, we could have a you know set time to send out 
Um, so that would, that would yeah, we wouldn't be. Two of our estimated bills, and then you. Oh, so you would consider it quarterly? Okay. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the first two are estimated based on the previous prior year. Okay. Yeah. And then when the tax rate is set, everything's worked out. In the next two. Gets adjusted. Okay. okay. Yeah, I I I was reading the legislation, and I think there is an option to do, um, an estimated with still having a twice a year payment, but it it's a secondary thing because most people go to quarterly but um you know just so that we can put out tax bills and get tax revenue on a regular that it's it's schedule is hard on our uh, the staff you know sarah's been you know like do yeah, we have I enough money in this year because we haven't had we had all that emergency expenditure go out for all the road repair we haven't had the normal tax you know the money to pay and so uh, pay the bills and so it's and then waiting on patriot and uh waiting on reading through sewer and it's it's been a lot of nervousness yeah. this year and so maybe if we spread it out a little bit it might be uh, less stressful it, it should help with cash flow right um, it is you know we definitely would want to think through yeah i think know, it's worth the, having a meeting and just just to kind look of look at the through. pros and cons of it all. yeah and if it's something that we would ultimately look to do you take time to get through and everything yeah. has to go up for town vote, et cetera. So, right. you know, even to start thinking about it now, you probably wouldn't have it, you know, implemented for another year or two. Exactly. Anyways. So mm -hmm. just, just, you know, yeah. wanted to throw that out, introduce it as something to maybe it's consider. Great. Well, if yeah, you because we were thinking about it for this town meeting, because um, we'd obviously have to have a vote. But yeah. um, if we were doing it this town meeting, that we would be able to give people time, not this round, but the next prepare yeah. for it yeah and adjust things yeah yeah yep, that makes sense yeah. I, I, I don't know people would actually like i mean yeah for it not a big you know, not a giant it, it evens deal. out their cash flow as well right so. right it's not such a large chunk but it i know it's always you know, at christmas it is <laughs> <laughs> for those of us that don't pay yeah. uh year round right you know. but I, I just wanted to make sure because i had already gotten people were, were worried that they're um more going to be impacted how, how would they get that set up with the banks and then you always going to have people that don't know what's going on and you know then all of a sudden that gets sort of you know yep so we want to have plenty of time to let people know about that yep. so Understood. thank you yep. all right great thank you so right. much thanks thank again you. have a great night thanks yeah, you night. too thank you uh, okay um Next item on the agenda is um, we have select board announcements. I, I just want to have um, the people remember that the historic churches tour yep. is this Sunday. Um, 11 to 3 is the re um, there's going to be a reception at this um, John Paul Center in the down here in the yep. middle of town. And the, we've had always had lovely food in any of these events. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I think it, it's very interesting and people really should um, participate. Now, the the one thing that um, the Friends of Deerfield had asked is, is that we use a reverse 911. And I, I don't know yeah. what you all felt about, we use the reverse 911 about the, when we changed the fireworks and the mm -hmm. parade you know, we had changes. I, I didn't know how you both felt if we if we did that again for the church tour. It's just sort of the, like the last event. Um, but it's kind of a gray area because we don't really do general announcement. Right. It's, it's usually impact. We didn't even do it for the tax vote. No. I mean, for the road vote. Oh, no, no, we usually don't. We just, we practice, we usually do it for annual town meeting as a practice. Right. Um, but um, we don't even generally use it for special town meeting, so it's up to you. So, I mean, I, I don't know how you feel. Well, yeah, I, I don't really think it's a good idea, but um, I do think we visit the question of you know, two or three weeks before a special election or, or a special town meeting. We need, we obviously, one thing we've learned is we need to do a better job of telling people, yeah, um, yeah. you know, and that's one of the few ways that if they've opted in. We know they got the message. Uh, you know, we can't rely on social media. A lot of people don't read the paper, so they miss all the stories about these things. Um, some people don't use social media, so they miss that. 
um, you know, and we don't have a town crier. So, um, and, you know, a lot of people don't come to South Deerfield on a regular basis. So um, it's a tough thing, but people obviously want to know um, um, and get information about this stuff that affects their lives. So I, I think revisit it when the next time we have a special meeting or an annual town meeting and see how people respond. That would so the consensus is not to do the reverse nine one one is because it really is just for emergency. Yeah, I know. Okay, I will let the friends of Deerfield know. But I I just wanted to encourage people to attend the. Um, it's a wonderful opportunity to yes. see our faith community and the historic connections with the churches because it's all all our churches. So it's it's very interesting. Um, okay, next item on the agenda is the. FY 2024 sewer commitment. It's the first half for review and um, uh, we are hereby authorized to collect from the 970 bills named on the commitment with the amount set against their respective names amounting in the aggregate of $880,000 to pay over the monies as soon as collected to the town treasurer and make a report of such payment to the town accountant. Second that motion. Or, I don't know if you made the motion, but I'll make the motion. Um, okay, make the motion. Yeah, no, the I was motion. just read read the yeah. amendment. And I'll uh, second it for discussion. Um, okay. I'm not seeing this. Is this because oh. it only exists in one form? Yes, it's yeah. only right. assigned. Yep, go ahead. And then there's also, we also have to vote on the abatements which are the, these are the automatic abatements, which um, customers pay no more than 125% of their previous winter usage. Cause this, this billing cycle is for last summer. So it's where people water the lawns and all that. So there's a list of automatic abatements um, totaling $44,889 and 14 cents that we'll, we'll vote okay. after this. Well, I was just going to say, we have a motion on the table for 800 and eighty thousand one hundred and twenty-seven dollars and eighty-nine cents. Yep. So it, that. we have a second. Okay. And we have a second. So all those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. And Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Trevor, you can make the motion for yeah, the, I'll make a motion the, to, the abatements. Um, seasonal. Yeah, the seasonal abatements. Authorize the seasonal abatement. The select board, board hereby authorizes the abatements of the above sewer accounts for single family owner occupied properties of above 125% of their own winter consumption for the FY24 commitment number one, totaling $44,889.14. Is that, is that yeah, a motion? motion. Yep. Okay, I'll second it. Thank you. Is there any more discussion on this? Nope. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. I'm sorry, you just almost signed in before. All right. Starting your key. <laughs> <laughs> um, do I need to sign into that? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. yes, you do. Yep. And you do. Too. I just was looking at the abatements. It's it's the regular abatements. Okay. <laughs> um, both have a T in the frame. I know. <laughs> uh -huh. The second item on the agenda is request for approval to include informational material with um, property tax bills pursuant to general laws, chapter 60, section 3A, D. And this is actually, um, Cassie was hoping to put some information in to the real estate tax um, yeah. uh, because it won't cost any money really. Um, and this will be, uh, she'll have the 2024 election calendar, yep. a reminder to license the dogs, and a schedule, schedule in accordance to um, that 60, chapter 60, section 3A. Mm -hmm. um, and that will save money on the postage. Sure. So I think that it's a great good. idea. Looks right. Um, I, you know, one of the th things that we have to consider is what are we doing uh, now that the vote hasn't passed? Mm -hmm. for um to cover what money we've spent and one of the things um that i think we have to put on the table is that kevin 
will not be able to hire contractors um, to do sidewalks. And um, I just don't see how he can have people. I mean, we can't pay for snow removal and stuff like that um, with contractors. We, we can do it with our highway department. Um, this is why that's such a stressful thing because if we don't secure contracts now for winter by the time if we can figure out how to pay for this we're not going to have well, any cash flow to ability pay. to uh pay well, so ability to hire anybody if we do get a vote that passes so I mean, we'll have to talk about this in a minute but well, you want to move forward with this? No, because what I wanted to do was put into this informational tax bill is that we are not going to be um, clearing the sidewalks this year mm -hmm. as an emergency. I mean, we just, Kevin yeah. was going to hire it, and we right. can't hire out. I know. Just, we have a lot to figure out what yeah. we can't do. I mean, we have but, a, but this is an opportunity to pass the information out to people. I mean, because one of the things is all of a sudden we're not doing the sidewalks. You know how people will get crabby about that mm -hmm. so i think we should support this i don't, I don't yes. have any problem but you this is also a... i just think we should add a little thing on the bottom here and say um be, given our financial situation we will not be clearing sidewalks with an alert well we have to do the um a vote right there's a bylaw that we would pass well we have to go take the bylaw to town meeting but if we don't have the money to hire someone to clear the sidewalks that's just a vote of the select board the it's bylaw right. the bylaw would is you're putting the bylaw in place because you're putting penalties for not clearing the sidewalk got it and and i certainly want to make sure we have a waiver system i mean cindy Mayeski knows who our homebound teams are and we're not going to find our homebound seniors and right. all that kind of stuff. So that has to be a thoughtful process and we have to go to town meeting for that. Mm -hmm. But we as a select board can tell Kevin we're freezing all expenses. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got to tell the town people that, I mean, all department heads that we're yeah. freezing, we're freezing on hiring and freezing on expenditures. And one of the things we're freezing on is we're not going to hire contractors to clean the sidewalks. Right? right, but we yeah. we should warn people about that. I mean, yeah. the winter's coming. Yeah, and I I also, you know, I don't know. It would be interesting to hear Kevin's um, perspective on having if we have to rely on our DPW crew to do all of the snow plowing of municipal roads. What is that going to mean for a, a mid level storm? I mean, does that mean that we clean the main roads and then we do the uh, peripheral roads um, the next day or as possible, um, you know, and what's required by law. I don't know the law on this, but, um, you know. You get your roads cleaner and they are clean. As soon as you can, as soon as you can afford it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I basically, and, and I know that we under budget for this because the state allows us to because of the vagaries of winter weather, um, but you still have to pay the contractors. Right. And and so that's so, my point is that like if 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 we're relying more on contractors to clear our roads than we are on our DPW to clear our roads, then I'd like to know about that. Well, what we're gonna do is just have the roads be cleared by our DPW. So the response time to road clearance is gonna be less. Right. I'm, I mean more I mean it's gonna be a additional time, obviously. We're not gonna be able to respond as fast. At, looking at the amount of shortfall we have i mean this is a one drop in the bucket of how much oh, yeah. stuff we're going to have to cut this year to make to make th up three million dollars well i mean i was gonna i was gonna ask casey to have the department down. right well i'm no i'm gonna have casey um talk to the department heads including uh, there's nothing we can do about frontier that's an assessment but we can talk to the elementary school we can talk to the police and, and um, highway and all departments and say, what is a 20% cut going to do for you right now? Mm -hmm. What What is mandated? What do we have to deliver? What are we continually, I mean, what, and then how are we going to adjust? So we could come up with 
a few million dollars worth of cuts that are going to be if this doesn't pass if we reschedule tonight i mean we pick a date and and that doesn't pass then this is what's going to happen the next day mm -hmm. but we have to make some plans because we right. already know we have a cash flow issue absolutely so you're not we cannot commit to um more contractors for like clearing the sidewalks right um we can't commit to engineering i mean i'm really disappointed gonna we're going to miss, gonna miss the grant money. we're going to miss the deadline for hawks road and we can't hire an engineering firm for hawks road because we're going to miss that deadline and we're going to miss that deadline so you know all the effort to match up the roads with what grant with grant money is is going to be shot. shot if we don't you know m make an effort to get it passed i most of the people that i've talked to including darius he he just didn't think that it was going to be an issue so he got mm -hmm. he was tied up with basketball and he yeah. we didn't come and vote people were busy. and and people were busy and they didn't think it was an issue so we just got to make sure that we impressed upon people that it's you got to come out and vote with less than 10 percent return response of voters then you know that no wonder it didn't pass it's it's a um I, i'm not sure i don't know how much people understood how vital it is because you know, it, it's not money that we want to go. Spend. It's money that we have spent already and yeah. have not uh, to get emergency response and get, you know, these contractors came in on Saturday, Sundays, work through the night to get these roads open and then um, and then planning all the emergency stuff. I mean, if we went and did all of that work in a planned thing, it would be five times as, as expensive oh, because absolutely. we in, a, in an emergency right. and over we um, oversized the culverts, not over, but upgraded the culvert size to handle the amount of water coming off. I just, you know, I'm not sure. I think people maybe thought we were getting this money to plan on doing all these things that we always wish to do. It's paying the bills because if we don't pay these bills, like we have to cut $3 million out of everything else. And we run the town on four or five for a whole year. Yes. So right. you're talking 75% of your budget cut in right. the next six months. Yeah. That yeah. means closing town hall for days on end. It means one day for, for dump service. I mean, there's, there, it's not hiring anybody else, but letting people go. I mean, you, if you don't have the money to pay the bills, you don't have a choice. It's not the federal government where you just create a deficit. You have June thirtieth. If those bills aren't paid, you are in serious trouble. I don't and I don't. Yeah, I don't think that. Uh, you know, I think that two things were they possibly. One was um, residual, you know, uh, unhappiness with uh, the fact that we we're going to build a library expansion, and and there's a solid core of people in town who don't believe anything other than roads and public safety should be mm -hmm. considered. Um, and there was a low turnout issue because I think a lot of people who went to the special town meeting saw that it was unanimously approved and just they, about, they just yeah. didn't turn out. Um, and I don't think they understood the underlying issue, which is we're using general fund money to pay for an emergency that we didn't plan for. And it's in the 2.5 to $3 million range currently. And so that means that 2.5 to $3 million of general fund money is not available to pay for the things that we pay for for to run the town and to del deliver public services like um you know the the transfer station which is mm -hmm. subsidized like you know snow removal from sidewalks uh and numerous other things so um i don't think i did a very good job of trying to explain this to people who talked to me so mm -hmm. um, i think if we schedule another vote we need to do uh, a very good job of explaining this is why we need this to happen not mm -hmm. because we're going to spend five million dollars but we're we're going to have the ability to pay bills beyond you know um robbing the general fund the, and cutting services the other thing i think that's important to get across is that um when you authorize five million dollar borrowing it doesn't mean you're borrowing five million automatically 178 dollars is added to everybody's average bill 
for 20 years. For yes. 20 years. That's it's not how it works. It gives you an authorization to borrow up to. We basically never are going to borrow up to that because we are hoping for some state help. We have no clue what that amount will be way below what we need. It just is because there's so many people in need and there's 15 million across the whole Commonwealth um, to pay for those emergency issues. So there's no way it could cover all of our expense. We knew that and we, we would, you know, we're trying to be frugal in what we're doing, but um, we're only going to borrow what is necessary uh, right away. So it's not like we're, you know, and then hopefully by this spring, we would rescind any borrowing we don't need. It's a really a cash flow that we get through this year because this was just unprecedented. Uh, yeah. And I mean, this is a lot worse than Irene. And generally, when we handle grants, um, you know, when I've worked in the past on road repair, it's been one or two. Mm -hmm. We're talking six or seven. Yeah. Major. And major ones. And and this is, I mean, this is significant. And and you got to match them up to see which is the, the best match for us. Some of them like mass works, hopefully would not be a match. I mean, require a match. Right. But the Little Meadow Road is going to be an EWP project. That's a 20% match. Right. It was, you know, it's probably almost a million dollars. So guess what? That's two hundred thousand. Yep. You know, and and you have to have engineering um, initially for like the Mass Works grant. The uh, EWP money, they will work with us and they provide the engineering and and they handhold us through the whole process. So yes, there's a twenty percent match, but we don't have to do anything else. Mass Works, you've got to have the engineering. You have to have the solution. I mean, and. And we're being, and these aren't even guaranteed. And these aren't even guaranteed. Are right. 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 But you're fronting this you money, can. right? You're fronting the money so you can put the application together and put your best foot forward. Right. Together. I mean, the brick grants going in because that's almost done. But what's happening is we're we're going to miss out on the Hawks Road one, and I, and we got to get this our act together so we can apply for the six hundred four B and the. 319, which looks like it's going to be at the end of January or the first week of February deadline. And, you know, it, a ton of work has been done already. We, we you know, um, Deerfield River was, was, you know, not a priority watershed. I got it so that it can be a priority, voted as a priority watershed so we can apply for this stuff. That was major work this summer, mm -hmm. and and we've got it because of all the silt coming down from off the road, and we've got the railroad, um, Deep Mass DOT railroad, able to work with us. They they took Kevin toured with them three hours on Monday. They're willing to work with us and partner all along that you know Pleasant Road and I mean Pleasant Street and Depot Road and all that mess. Yeah. And it, I mean, there's like 20, more than 20 spots on the railroad that are washing out. And so they're going to work with us to figure out the water situation, which is what we need to do. We, and that's water, a huge, yeah, that's a huge engineering question. It's like, how do you address right. the watershed all along the, 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 the railroad obstructs the normal flow of right. water in a lot of places. And, um, you know, you can see if you walk the railroad tracks, you can see areas where the the railroads, uh, the rails are deformed. They're yeah. sinking over long stretches, and uh, it, it's... Amtrak is if they're on a reduced speed. Right. So the railroad, I and mean, that's not our money. We're not. That, no, yeah. no, but, but we're partnering, yeah. right? We right. partner with their engineering, but we've got to be able to have some flexibility to respond when we you know, have, have an area. Cause there's, there's more than 20 areas. There's like 26 or 27 areas in the town of Deerfield alone yep. that are, you know, washing out. And then it's that culvert just above Wapping road that was problematic. So, you know, we're trying to deal with this kind of stuff and to have no flexibility um, to work with anything is really tough. So that's, and that's, yeah. I yeah, I don't so, know. It's it's a lot like when in 2019, when the first boat for the sewer failed, we spent the summer explaining to people the necessity and the need, and and we got an overwhelming vote after. So, right. Yeah. And the only the only challenge we have here is, you know, we we need to 
do that relatively soon. Yeah. So we're going to need to condense the educational effort yeah. and also, you know, work to make people understand that they need to come out and participate, even if they vote no again. If we get 50% of the voters to come out and they still vote no, then we know we know that, you know, a large portion of the population has participated in this. And it's a real, at less than 10% of voters, it's not Sorry. that the town doesn't support. So anybody can hear what they're talking about. Oh, Kevin, can hi. You, Kev. Yeah. Um, so Casey, um, along those lines. Amy. Do you have a date for us that we can um, talk about for scheduling dates. another or dates? So I did have a conversation with the town clerk. This would be very tight. So the deadline by which you have to have a vote based on the requirements from the date of town meeting, you have to have your debt exclusion vote done by 90 days from your town so meeting. So it's like January 20th. That's January 20th. Okay. Um, but you also need to give the clerk 35 days notice to be able to prepare not only the ballots, but the machines. And she has uh, 10 days because this was so close. And so there's really the reason bad. I wanted to talk to Cassie about that today is because I don't know what I don't know. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I didn't know is you have to have a 10 day period um, to allow for a request for a recount. And part of that, <clears throat> excuse me, is connected to the disks that are used in the voting machines. So that can't be turned, you can't send that to the vendor mm -hmm. to program the ballot until after you pass that deadline. Okay. Um, and that so that's a question that Cassie has and she's following up on that. Right. Um, we also would need to take into account early voting. So yeah. again, she's actually been conferring with some of her colleagues and plans to get back to me. Now she's out at a training tomorrow. Okay. So what I did do, what I did when I was talking to Cassie was try to get an idea of when, if there's questions I don't know to ask, I wanted to have the ability to talk to council to make sure that we cover our bases. Yeah, of course. And I did leave a message. Cassie was with me, left a message for council. I will follow up. Um, the, the question really is if you wanted a date, um, it really falls. So if the deadline is the 20th, you're really looking at the week of Martin Luther King Jr. Day week, that week. The, um, the 15th is a holiday. So the next day is a Tuesday and that would be the 16th. Yeah. Um, so that was what she and I initially discussed. <clears throat> Keep in mind that the yeah. MMA conference is at the end of the week. Right. So I think um, short of us having firm answers for you. Let's kind of plan on that date, but if and, and well, the Casey only thing that I'm concerned questions. about is that if we need the 10 days between the ballot boxes, we don't have a chance to do a second date. We're not going to have a second date anyways. We won't so, be able to hit a second date because that yeah. deadline okay. is the 20th. So, so we're, we're agreeing it's this it. one. If it doesn't pass, pass that, we'll bring it back to town meeting. And, and so it. just understand, this would be a huge undertaking yeah. because you also have three... Um, I, I just want to make sure everybody understands this. This is some of the conversation I had. Yep. So you've got three holidays between now and then. Yep. And Cassie and I wanted to give ourselves a little bit of time to sort of get some of these answers for you. Um, that being said, I thought you guys might want to consider doing another request for a special election. Yep. So I did reach out to everybody and tell them that, um, we could plan on and post for a meeting on Friday at 2.30 to talk about this. Um, I told Cassie that as well. Okay. Um, just because we plan a meeting doesn't mean it necessarily happens, but it does give Cassie and I a little bit more time to be able to outline yet. everything. That's and fine. I will tell you, she's working on a timeline. So you have a firm, so you have firm information. Um, but again, she's out at a training tomorrow, so that's she'll be able to produce that for us yeah. a little bit after no, that. No, that's I think. okay. I I think there's consensus that we'll we'll try to go for the 16th then. But let's hear what. Yeah, let's, I mean, you know, if, let's if, hear if, what could you come up with and have a meeting so Friday and see what. I if, posted the meeting. Yeah, right. And it's um, Zoom. It's a hybrid, so okay. that you can both be because if you did do the special election, if you did call it, you would need to sign the warrant so that Cassie can then work with the constables to get it out. Yeah. Um. But that only means two people have to sign that warrant. Right. 
So road, if two I people can can sign okay. that, conversation. Um, that, okay. that gives her the ability to do that. I just want everybody to be aware that we're still chasing information. And that's understandable. Yeah, so we'll find out Friday. So it is what, posted what, for Friday at 2.30. Okay. okay, that's good. Yeah, I've that's got it fine. in my calendar. Yep, that's fine. We'll make the decision. Um, but hopefully this... 2.30. 2.30. Yeah. And hopefully we'll pick the 16th. Yeah, um, see, see if it works. So that that was the date that we talked about. I mean, it could be the 17th. I right. think if you get further it's into that. Flexible. I just want to know what, what the limitations are, wow. what the lift is. Actually, I'm not flexible. We need to take care of this. No, so. I, what I'm saying is I'm flexible oh, okay. on those dates. 16 or 17. Be, yeah. yeah. So Typically... Deerfield holds, a, there's two days that Deerfield usually uses, either a Monday or a Tuesday, because most of the state and, and federal elections are Tuesdays, and the town election is a Monday, but Monday is a holiday that yep. this time we needed, our timing had to be using yesterday's date um, so that we had a clear path for certain um, dates. Yep. to to hit certain dates. So when I looked at it, I counted out to the 16th and I, that's, I sort of, I wanted to talk to Cassie before I said too much more because right. I wanted to get her okay. feedback. And I don't, like I said, I don't know what I don't know. So we, we had to have that, a conversation. That's fine. I, and, and the reason why I was pressing you through email about hosting the meeting is not because I knew a specific date that we needed, but we needed to obviously host the meeting so that we could make a decision based on the research you were going right. to do in the interim. So I'm right. glad that we're posting the meeting. That's great. Yes. Right. Yeah. We know you got. So I out. sent it to postings as soon as she and I were pretty much done. All right. Um, so that's up. Um, Carolyn, did you want to go back? So Cassie had sent you that request. Do you want to go back and vote to approve adding that additional material? Yes. And, but I, I mean, since we're not going to even get um, another vote, I mean, if the earliest vote we're going to make is January 16th, I think we need to notify people. I mean, obviously, we're going to have some snowstorms, so we need yep. to put in here. Well, I would. So can I make a suggestion? This is very much geared toward dealing with people, uh, dealing with um, licensing. Um, and and I think if you add other things to that, it's going to confuse people. So I, it might be worthwhile just leaving that alone and we could maybe send out postcards or something no because the, casey that's in, in, in that's costing money i know but i don't if if it confuses people it could be detrimental to what cassie's trying to do there is some law requirements over what goes in the tax bills right or the um the election stuff no so sarah we um stuff. we can do stuff with regards to this sarah worked with cassie on this um to develop something that I, because they looked the law up and they had discussed it. And Cassie told me that they, she had worked with Sarah about this. Um, as far as information that goes out to the public. Hey, you're right there. Uh -huh. For, um, <laughs> for a, about an election, there's different things to take into account. And I had sent you guys um, a PowerPoint that, Chris and I saw when we went to the STAM meeting right after in October, right after town meeting. And so from a legal perspective, there's certain things that elected officials can say, and there's certain things that have to be presented differently from staff. Mm -hmm. So for the, for purposes of, you know, what gets said and how it gets said, that's, that's a larger conversation. But what I just want to be careful about is that if Cassie can preserve exactly what she wants to say in this, it'll be more clear for residents. That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah, I, I think that it would be much more effective to send out a single specific thing about the special special election and make sure that we're not that we're explaining but not advocating. Um, I don't know what the fine line there can be. Um, and and I think it, you you put it in here with six other items, and I can guarantee you that people are just going to read over it. They get this in there. They they still act, you know, well, presidential primary, March 5th, you know, um, and they get all kinds of public uh, and, you know, news related tips on this, but they won't get it from here. But I feel like we have to notify people that we are not going to do the, the sidewalk <laughs> this year. That's, that's a huge change. 
Yeah, I mean, well, we can certainly. Uh, I have no public safety is a is a legitimate use of the the phone system, right? You know, and you know maybe we do one ahead of the of the first heavy snowfall, and then when the the snowfall comes, we do another one. Why don't you let us talk about that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, just because I. I and I, I'm not saying we shouldn't do something, Carolyn. All I'm saying is if we do a little bit of research, maybe we can help it be more effective. I know you want to tell people that. I get that. I, I think you need to let people know it's not mm -hmm. fair that people are not prepared. Well, none of us are saying that we want to be unfair to people. I mean, I know we I have know. Chris Larrabee from the recorder online and and this is a big deal. Yes, we're not going to be cleaning the sidewalks. And so I'm sure he's going to mention that in a story that he writes about this <laughs> and I will make every effort to post it on Deerfield now so that at least those and people are aware website. of it. And the town website, we need to do a better job I of know. putting these things on the town website in a way that they are meaningful to people. People don't visit the town website until after the fact right. um, anyway, but it are, should be easy to see these things. We are going to need to schedule some more time, though, to talk about that's one small aspect this is a massive shortfall so we're going to have to talk about well how we, we're going to be yeah able to we, need to, plan, we need to plan we need to plan that we'll have yep. to get a, a, a meeting and just kind of go through pull out that budget book what was budgeted and what what totals you know three million bucks right <laughs> it's going to be painful yeah but you know but hopefully I, we're going to have to do some to start with. Okay, yeah, so let's vote. Until... Let's vote on Cassie's thing. And okay. um, I, 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 I make because a... it's so difficult to reach people, I still want us to consider putting another stuff. Okay, on. I'm going to make a motion to approve Cassie's voting yes. calendar as written. Yep. I'll second that motion with the attention dog owners on the back. Yeah. Yep. All stuff. those in yep. favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. And then we'll find a solution to notifying people about. Yeah. And I agree with Trevor. We're, we're going to need to have a meeting that just focuses on. I wanted a preliminary um, people to show up preliminarily next week. Um, we we need to figure out some. Yeah, your your request for for department heads to come up yep. with cuts. Yeah. So you want me to send that out as soon as? Yes. Hiring freeze, spending freeze. Um. You know. And and looking for around twenty percent, and and that we can't obviously that doesn't count for assessments like Frontier's assessment, Skems's assessment, but yes, but it does include the elementary school. It does include all our departments like police and fire. I mean, uh, police and uh, highway, town clerk, our our office. Nothing you can do about that. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is: Do we have the settlement for the? Um, Replacing the. It's tree. in the. Replacing yes. the tree. signature. Yep. Okay. It's in here. Okay. So I'll make a motion to approve the the um, settlement for tree replacement at one forty four Sunderland Road. Yes. Um, do we have a second? I'll second for discussion. Okay. And um, do we feel like? Uh, we could have a brief synopsis of what we're doing here. Yeah, we well, I, I could give a quick rundown. Yes, please. So um, in putting the new uh, sewer plant in, uh, there's a two or three rows of pine next to the Headworks building. Uh, there was an understanding that most of those trees were planted by the town when the, when the um, Sewer plant came in, and our original Weston and Sampson plot plan showed those first row of trees on our property. We cut them down when we when they were getting close to the. Um, we didn't want them falling on the new Headworks uh, building, and we had plans to work with the next door neighbor to um, to build the berm and make sure there was some privacy between the new new facility and and the um, and their property, and so. Uh, after that was done and a little more a set when we did more surveying for the fence, we realized that 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 row of trees, we must have probably got approval from the everybody's previous owner to put trees on that because there were three rows of pines. And nobody really knows the history from back in the early 70s when all that happened. But um, so we need to pay to replace those trees and we're going to build a little berm and kind of do 
do some what work there. And this is this is um, giving us approval to go on the property. And Casey's working on some some MOU language. Waterline will have and it already has an excavator down there to pull the stumps. Um, and they they offered to just do that. They said we got the machine here, but they wouldn't want they didn't want to do it until they had the MOU signed that it's okay to go on that property. So all of this is just kind of getting that approval to replace that row of trees and um and this is a, this is a, a an agreement between us and the uh property owner that this the the amount that we're expending is the total sum that we're gonna correct outlay to solve this problem right yep okay um it needs to be signed by the chair so okay i'll make a motion to um have the settlement um between the town of deerfield and um and uh, Megan Blaney, one Megan Megan Blaney, uh, one forty four Sunderland Road, Deerfield, Mass. And I authorize the chair to sign. And I'll second that. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. And then if you let me know when that MOU is yep. good, I can just let them waterline know that they could yep. pull yep. the stumps, and then we'll. Get everything else no, ready. No, um, we have to. There's a letter of support for the a Massachusetts Broadband Institute. This is oh. hopefully to get, um, you know, our underserved areas like uh, since, uh, Juniper Drive and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a couple of other areas that have no internet. So um, I Correct. will make a motion, right? I'll make a motion to approve this. Okay. Sending a letter of support, support yes. letter of support to the Broadband Institute, and, mm -hmm. and it's it's supporting Verizon's application to the MPI underserved, yeah, for a pro program. And I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Um. The next item on the agenda. Oh, um, Bob is going on vacation, and we we don't have a building and alternate building inspector yet so well, we need to approve dick he's had he's so here. i've asked i've asked bob several times i will ask him again you have an opportunity to take another vote uh, okay well put it on the agenda for next week because i will it's i think it's already there i think chris already has it in there awesome. um and i did ask him um so i will follow up with him again tomorrow all right just make sure we gotta we gotta have somebody Okay, so we're we're not going to have a vote tonight about appointing Dick. As no, time. no, I guess not. So we'll put it off till next week. Okay. Um, oh. Well, I also just want to thank Dick Kalshevsky for the service he does to the town, particularly with regard to septic systems. Yep. Um, he helps everyone when they have a problem, and I, after many years in town, had my problem, which Dick came out and helped resolve. So, um, thank you, Dick. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. Um, he does that for everybody which is wonderful yep. um is there anything else casey that you wanted us to address that uh between now and next week well we next did week. have um the recommendation for the senior center program coordinator um but in light of that conversation i don't know how to talk to you about this okay um we had gone through a an interview process and chris thank you very much, <laughs> wrote up the recommendation. It is a staff member that um, the director relies on, but based on our, our your earlier conversation, I I honestly don't know what to ask at this point because it's it's a difficult if if we're asking all our departments. The issue is, is this is this is a regional service and it's supported in other ways. She actually has grants to cover this stuff, some of this stuff. Um, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, but um, because it isn't, there's grants and there's other funding sources, it may not be as much of a financial pinch for that particular issue. On the other hand, I I don't want to gainsay anything I heard you guys talk about earlier. Um, why don't we put it off until next week? And that gives us some time to... I can check with Brenda about it because she does have a grant that may cover some of this and, and it, I, it used to cover all of it. So um, we're going to have to ask her for um, some budget cuts anyway. So you can ask her how she 
you know, the impact on this okay. funding. Okay. All right. Um, this might be what she would want to hold off on as, you know, as be her budget cut. Okay. So why don't you talk to her yep. and we, we can make a decision for next week. Does that suit everybody? Yeah. I was just looking for the letter that was um, referred to. You know what? I I know Chris emailed it, but he I may don't. Have emailed it, and I it's not in the package. I before. don't think I didn't realize I needed to print it. Sorry. No, it's okay. I, I I think I looked at it earlier, and I just wanted to ref, refresh. I my can memory. print it, and, and uh, it's it's not important. We're not going to vote on it tonight, anyway. Nope. Okay. Um. So, Trevor, yes, I just want to add a couple things to the next. Um. They're not on the agenda, but I just wanted to bring up. Um. So we had our sewer meeting today, the monthly meeting number 30 down at the plant. Um, I'll just give a quick update on that. They're, um, they're getting very close. They have one more concrete pour on Tuesday uh, for the North Iteration Tank, I believe. And um, they're going to go down. I think Waterline's going down with a seven-man team next week and then a five-man team. And then they'll be out of their... For Christmas, between Christmas and New Year's, um, they all take vacation anyways. Um, but they will come back sometime in January. They'll be out of there for a little bit. They'll come back sometime in January when the chair chair rails come in, the railings and stuff have to come in. So they'll have a little bit more work in January, and then they'll be out of there completely until spring, when they can do final cleanup and final punch list they're already knocking out most of the punch list they're about 96 percent done oh that's so, so exciting it is really exciting Very i would much love so. for the spring to have a as i mentioned have a um an open house so people can really see what what we've done there um i think um uh, so so there was so there's that uh a good meeting today on that believe it or not we're still trying to get the motor the grit removal motor fixed so it's back at it's still at the suppliers whatever so we've held all the money back so we can go buy another motor but that would just again take more time we're fine without it at the moment but um they thought they would hear in the next couple of days and i said oh so an update next next month on where we're at and he said no it should be in a couple of days so i think in the in the next week or so we should have that back and fixed or we're just going to go buy a different grip motor so so is grit getting into the motor? Is the motor just not running properly? Uh, no. So what the, this motor does is uh, remove some grit that comes into the system. Um, we've never had grit removal before in this system, so we just we still don't have it. But this new thing that we put in the Headworks building will pull out that like fine sand, gravel and yeah, stuff, right. sand and and all of that. So um, it'll be nice when it's done. It's just for some reason the motor comes on and then shuts off. Comes on, shuts off. Yeah, so for some but it's reason, not the actual grit removal portion of it. It's the motor that runs it, the It's the machine. motor that sucks out the grit. Yeah, but it's a motor sits over here, and then there's an attachment to it where the grit goes through and gets Correct. sucked out. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yep. It's the motor that does that yeah. work. Yeah. yeah. For some reason, not not coming on and staying on. Um, so then the other couple of things is um, DPC and Eric Niels have been talking with um, DEP about uh, a couple of things. So we had a full inspection from DEP and what we've, there's only two areas that we need to address. One of them is uh, BBC and the amount of load that they're putting in. They, uh, DEP wants to, um, and I don't have all this nailed down, so I'll talk about it more in depth later, but there is, they need to classify them um, as, as an industrial user because of the amount of load. I think there's a couple of uh, criteria that make them an industrial user. Um, we don't have them classified that right now. The fee uh, that they're paying should be about four times what they're paying right now um, based on what DEP's input is. And because they're about 40% of the load that goes into that plant is because of that one entity and how much uh, BOD they add into the, into the stream. Mm -hmm. So there's, they would, their DEP is requiring them to have, they're not, I don't believe they're going to require them to pre-treat, but they're going to require, because we can handle it at the plant, but they're going to require um, testing three times a week and specific locations that they test. We need to have a, um, an agreement with them. It's a engineering 
um, it's, a, it's an agreement to be an industrial user. I don't have all the terms with me at the moment, but I do have a proposal for from DPC that they will write up all that agreement, get it all set. Then go ahead. To your point. Yeah. Um, this would be a this information would be good to be incorporated into regulations that still have to be promulgated. Bingo. So Put if it's in that, too. if it's in that, that would I'm be great. Give this to you, Casey. Uh, yes, it, he also mentioned that. You know, he has draft stuff there that he would like to put all together as well. And and because there that was the other thing that DEP wanted to see is our regulations right. and all of that stuff done up and um and you know the teeth that we have to implement. Yeah, and we need to get that. those promulgated anyway because we've got uh, those time frames we have to hit. Exactly. So so, so I'll leave this with you and thank everybody you. can share it and see it. Um so so it's getting that squared away. And then the other item was um because our plant is is uh, can handle over a million gallons per day, um, there there is a different level class that the plant should be classified at. But but David thinks that he can, and he has talked with DEP a bit. But he thinks that he he can write a letter explaining why some parts of the plant have the capability to manage a million gallons. The plant is not classified for a million. It's 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 um, I mean a hundred thousand. It's um, it's like eight hundred and something thousand. So yes, it's below a million gallons. So um, and and I think everybody can agree to that. So I think he he needs to. He was asking if he wanted us to write that letter for us, absolutely evaluate it, and then and then send it in on on our behalf. We have the ability later on to manage a plant, but right now we do not, and we are not managing. We're around half a million. Yes. So, uh, on an average, um, certainly it can go higher, but it's not. Um, it's not anywhere near a million down today. So, that, um, that, that reminds me. Thank you for reminding me. Sure. Um, I in the meeting yesterday, I was in. Um, uh, EPA is coming out with a new permitting, which is related to that. Yeah. So that's why we ac absolutely have to get that letter out before um, the permitting changes, mm -hmm. because um, we want to make sure we're not classified as an MS4 community. Right. Um, and that will be one thing that we need to have Christopher done address if we have to tweak any of our stormwater regs to meet, meet the new requirements so he'll have to work with the planning board on this because um you know the problems with the ms4 in northampton were just horrible so we don't want to especially with now our sewer treatment plant operating correctly right. we want to make sure that we get our letters in there and and that we also not get picked up as an ms4 community right and that is really critical because that will cost every single downtown sewer user a ton of money right and it, it's really that that is an expense we fought it off you know almost i think it was 2008 or 9 when we whenever we did our stormwater regs that yeah. was a result of pushing back on not becoming an ms4 community so you put the regs in it yeah we control, we control and and the whole town came out and voted for that because it was going to be a gigantic expense for people yeah. so again we need if we have to tweak the stormwater bylaws we need mm -hmm. to be on that before that all happens so right. so um is this something where we're gonna need to authorize um you know christopher dunn working directly with the planning board chair and and our legal counsel to to look at this stuff it it's gonna it's it's from my understanding the new permitting they're, they're coming out with their new permitting in february ish so it's something that he has to keep an eye on and if we are have a chance of being picked up we need to figure out how we're not going to get picked up well this is my question is okay so we have between now and february before these new things come out oh yes is there yes. anything that we need to do now knowing what these preliminary regs are and who would know that information in other well, words so you can't wait until the regs come out and then try to retroactively fix no something. no no but he could we don't know what the new they haven't it's going to be based it was based on the old 2000 census now they're going to do it on the 2020 census 
and we've been pretty stable population. Yeah, so so, right. so we I'm hoping we will be under the radar, but it's something that he just has to get on the be aware of and be and and make sure that if the planning board has to do something, then it, it happens. Right. We don't know uh if we're gonna be classified yes or no. But the idea is to avoid it. And MS4 means what for the public? Uh, yeah. I knew you were going to ask me that. It's, it also has to do with it has to do with water <laughs> discharge. That's why I was thinking uh, a next maybe a, a meeting coming up shortly. We could discuss this mm -hmm. um, and have a discussion on all this, and maybe pull in DPC could give some. Advice. That might be a good idea yeah, because then it, have... it'll look be informative it all has for to all do of with us. Stormwater, yeah. right? Right. Stormwater stuff. And exactly. Yeah. Maybe we could you know ask some you know christopher dunn to sit in on that meeting just mm -hmm. so he yeah. yeah he just needs a little background so that he can work with the planning right. board right to tweak our regulations because yep. we were able to skate by before and i i'm hoping we will do right. the same thing yeah by adopting the regs that's how we did it right one thing i did want to i i think we both we all received something from the energy committee i i think about um some new opportunities to get grant money to actually install solar panels on certain buildings hey david keith question um the energy committee i think sent us a notice about um possibilities for getting solar panels installed on municipal buildings is that something that's real yes okay yes, it is. and because i was going to suggest that uh we talk to the energy committee about um, look looking with Eric Meals, our sewer plant director, to see if any of the structures down there would be eligible for grant funded solar panels because it's a big energy suck down there. So just put that on your radar. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> In addition to the free solar tracker we have. Right. Yeah, he was talking about that today. He's excited to get that going. Good. Before you guys go, yeah. um, I had just said something to Carolyn. Carolyn, I will help you um, finish the the um, checks that you have to do in Gateway. Right. I actually have it ready for right. you to do this. Okay. Um, so after the meeting, before you leave, sit with me. But I had a question. It was actually something Chris mentioned to me. So you formally haven't had, haven't really... A, I haven't sent an email out to anybody about the potential financial impacts of us not having the vote passed yesterday mm -hmm. and what that means to budgets. Right. But B, we've had hiring processes that were ongoing. And <clears throat> in one case, which is the program coordinator, um, I did get confirmation a couple minutes ago that this particular position is grant funded. Mm -hmm. So... Then it can be, that'll be fine. fine. It, it does. It wouldn't affect the general fund. Right. We're but talking about general fund general money. Fund. So there's one other thing that comes to mind, and it's something that we had a planning meeting about a group of us today, and that's the assistant town clerk's position. Um, we're asking the clerk to do a lot in the next six weeks. So, and if we could move quickly on this, it would get her more help. Um, it might be something that before you guys come down with definite um, votes, it might be something that you take into account because you're asking for that kind of um, just that kind of time and effort. So I'm just asking you to consider it. I'm not asking, I, I realize we need to be equitable with everybody, but there's a huge push to get through these special elections and frankly they've been working with one person for almost a year i know um so just my two cents worth but right. so since to go back to the, the program coordinator since this is grant funded would the board be willing to vote to appoint um yes thomas patria I have a question. Um, so, do you want is, me to print that letter for you, Tim? I can't. This is a year-over-year -year grant. So, what happens when the grant doesn't get renewed? We can make that a condition. Yeah, um, we do. We make but a condition. It is this a condition. is this is a grant that 
through the correct me if i'm and i there's two grants that she uses one's the sig grant and one's a different grant and generally the program coordinator was paid for out of the that not was, out of the sig grant it was out of the other grant right do you remember the name of it uh, is it the formula grant well the formula fund is is generally what i i could pull the budgets from last night's meeting. We had a boo meeting last night. As long that as it's might a condition, I don't help inform him. I yeah. just know that it's grant. I was yeah. sure. I was pretty sure it was grant funded, we but I wanted to ask Brenda to that because we. I mean, we've always had it's Sue's old position, and we've had that for fifteen years. Okay. And it's always been funded by that grant. So, um, um if you want yeah, to give me a sec, I can check I, with I, Brenda. Yeah, I don't. I don't need you to print anything out for me. I. I and and I, I just wanted to make sure that it's it was grant you know, dependent. Yep. And so therefore it should be. And the only other question I had, and I'm sure the boo looked at this was, um, you know, the, there's been, and this is probably regular. There's been a fair amount of, I don't know if this is, I can't tell experience, whether that's work experience or it's college experience or it's both. It just seemed like there was a lot of short-term employment and maybe that's the nature of this kind of job. So some of that, my impression is, and maybe, maybe Chris has a different thought, but in some cases when you have grant funded or, or positions that may not be funded, like you said, okay. for long periods of time, that necessitates a change. Yeah. Chris, is there anything you'd like to add to that? No, I think that pretty much sums it up. Uh, it's a, it's a part-time pos uh, position in the field of senior services. So um, positions like that, I think, tend to have a pretty high turnover rate across different organizations um, would just be my reasoning for that. Because ordinarily, yes, it is a bit of a red flag to see a lot of change on somebody's resume, but he's covered a lot of ground, I think. Um, and I, I touched on some of the experience that Mr. Patria has in the memo that I wrote. Okay. That's fine. I'll, I'll take a motion. It is, it is kind of fun to do that. Yeah, good formula fund. So yeah, I'm fine. And we have received that over a period of time. So do you want me to print you the memo? No, that's okay. Was, we just, did email it, but I yeah, no, didn't I, realize I, I, I had did printed it. it. I did read it. Okay. So. Um, can you make a motion then, Tim? Um, I guess I just put away a gentleman's <laughs> name. So let me see. Is it uh, Thomas Patria? Yeah. Thomas Patria. Yeah, I make a motion that we uh, appoint, uh, approve the appointment of Thomas Patria uh to work in the uh, programs programs uh for the south county senior center okay. um and dependent on grant funding continuing second that motion all those in favor tim hilchey aye trevor mcdaniel aye carolyn s aye would you also vote to have um me finalize the hiring process uh, yeah. with jennifer make a motion to uh authorize casey warren to um handle a final job offer with in coordination with the senior center uh, coordinator, and Chris. uh director, director and Chris. Jennifer. <laughs> yeah and, and Chris Thank Nolan. You. Thanks. Second. All those in favor? Milchi aye. Trevor McDaniel aye. Carolyn S aye. Okay. Thank you. You so did I actually I had a conversation with Keith uh with David Keith Gilbert about this coordinating with the South uh, the the, the wastewater treatment plant and Eric Meals on potential yeah. solar panels. I think that would be good. Sure. And there's oh, a lot I, of there's a lot absolutely. of good real estate on those roofs. There is. And that that will lower the operational costs mm -hmm. tremendously. Yep. Um so I think that's wonderful. Okay. Sounds good. I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Second. All those in favor. Tim Hilchi aye. Trevor McDaniel aye. Carolyn Ness aye. Thank you everybody. Thank you.